Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For this week's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the 2009 case of Lakvir Singh. 40-year-old Lakvir worked for a catering company in London. She lived in Marlborough Road, Southall, with her husband, Onka, who was 17 years her senior. The couple had three children together. By marriage, the couple were related to a man by the name of Lakvinder Chima, but he was more commonly known as Lucky. Lucky worked at Rentakill Initial, where he was a popular and well-known member of staff. Sometime in the mid-1990s, Lucky's marriage broke down and he temporarily went to live with Lakvir and Onka. Both Lakvir and Lucky were in their mid-twenties at that time, whilst Onka was in his early forties. Lakvir was unhappy in what she saw as her loveless arranged marriage to an older man and before long Lakvir and Lucky had started an affair. When Lucky moved out of the couple's home, the affair continued. Lakvir would visit Lucky's house most days in order to cook and clean for him. Twice during the course of their affair, Lakvir would discover that she was pregnant. Both of these pregnancies were terminated reportedly at Lucky's insistence due to the shame this would bring to them if their affair was discovered by others. The affair continued for many years, facilitated by the fact that Onka was often absent for long periods of time whilst receiving treatment for cancer in both the United Kingdom and also in India. In October 2008, around the time of Lakvir's 39th birthday, Lucky met a lady by the name of Gurjita Chung. He met her at the local temple in Southall. Gurjita, who was 21 years old, had arrived in the United Kingdom on a false passport. The meeting between the two was arranged by Lucky's sister with a view to marriage. A couple of weeks after this meeting, the couple announced their engagement with plans to marry on Valentine's Day the following year. Lakvir heard that her lover had got engaged whilst visiting her relatives in India. She bombarded Lucky with text messages begging him to break off the engagement. Lakvir was determined to drive a wedge between the couple, claiming that Gajita only wanted to marry him in order to become a UK resident and despite his engagement, Lucky continued his affair with Lakvir. However, after a while, their relationship began to cool, and Lakvir became ever more desperate. After seeing Lucky with Gajita, Lakvir threatened to burn down his house. At this point, their 15-year affair came to an end, and Lucky began to look forward to life with his fiance. He was renovating his four-bedroom house on Prince's Road, Feltham, where he also lived with two lodgers. Together with Gurjita, he started making plans for their Valentine's Day wedding, and the couple began talking of starting a family soon after. Neighbours remember seeing Lucky during the Christmas holidays of 2008. He was his usual friendly and healthy self, and appeared to be very happy with his new fiance. However, by the 28th of December, he had been admitted to hospital where he spent over a week being treated for an undiagnosed stomach problem. After making a full recovery, he returned home and resumed his work. On Tuesday the 27th of January 2009, Lucky and Gajita spent the evening together. They had a late dinner, microwaving some leftover chicken curry and chapatis and spent some time talking through their wedding plans. Lucky was hungry and he had a second helping whilst Gogeta went to have a shower. Soon after that, Lucky started to feel unwell. His face began to feel numb to the touch and less than an hour later, he lost control of his arms and legs and could no longer see. Gogeta started to feel the same way. The couple managed to call 999 
But when an ambulance did not arrive, Lucky's sister rushed the pair to West Middlesex Hospital. Arriving at the hospital in the early hours of the morning, Lucky's condition continued to decline, and at 2.36 a.m. he was pronounced dead. Meanwhile, Gogeta was put into a medical coma in the hope of saving her life. The hospital were immediately suspicious of their illness and contacted the police, fearing a possible biological or radiological attack. The Health Protection Agency sent teams in chemical suits to seal off the couple's home. The police declared that they were treating the death as highly suspicious and officers removed samples of food from the home together with chemicals that Lucky used in his day-to-day -day work. The post-mortem examination completed on the 29th of January and it revealed that traces of cyanide were found in Lucky's blood but only at a level that could occur naturally in the body. The post-mortem failed to ascertain the cause of death and the police needed to wait for the results of further toxicology tests. The results that came back were very surprising and extremely distressing. Lucky had been killed by aconite poisoning. Aconite, which is also known as wolfsbane or monkshood, is sometimes referred to as the queen of poisons, and it is said to produce a particularly cruel death as the victim's mind remains clear throughout the agonizing symptoms that include severe vomiting and stomach pains, burning pains and numbness, followed by paralysis, loss of sight, and the shutting down of internal organs until death swiftly follows. The search of Lucky's home found aconite in the remains of the chicken curry that the couple had eaten shortly before becoming sick. One of Lucky's lodgers had seen Lakvir in the kitchen at the house for which she still had keys earlier that day. She had been removing the leftover curry from the refrigerator. Lakvir was arrested and the police raided her home in Southall where they found aconite in her coat pocket and also in her handbag. Despite the odds, Gogeta managed to survive her injuries. She had only eaten a small amount of the chicken curry, of which Lucky had taken a second serving. Lakvir was charged with Lucky's murder and the attempted murder of Gogeta. She was released on bail. The case gained a lot of attention, not only due to the particularly cruel method of poisoning, but also due to it being the first time since 1882 that a defendant had stood trial in England accused of aconite poisoning. The trial began in January 2010. The prosecution stated that Lakvir had shown a substantial amount of premeditation. It is believed that she had bought the aconite in India at the time when she first heard about Lucky's engagement. The prosecution went on to state that they believed that Lakvir had previously poisoned Lucky when he was admitted to hospital after Christmas in the hope that she could be the one to nurse him back to health and rekindle their affair. This didn't work and she became increasingly angry and jealous, which culminated in her sprinkling poison into the chicken curry that caused Lucky's death. The prosecution also stated that despite his dire condition, Lucky had used his final words to name his killer, stating that it was Lakvir who he believed had poisoned him. Lakvir refused to testify in court. Her defense stated that she was innocent and that they suspected her brother-in-law, Varinda Singh, and that he could have been responsible for the murder. They argued that Varinda believed that Lucky's behavior over the years, particularly that of having an affair with a married woman for over 15 years, had dishonored their family. On the 10th of February 2010, Lakvir was found not guilty of the attempted murder of Gogeta, and then found guilty of Lucky's murder and causing grievous bodily harm to Gurjita. Lakvir was sentenced to life in prison and will serve a minimum of 23 years, meaning that her earliest release date will be 2033, when she will be in her 60s. That concludes today's case. In 2020, Season 6, Episode 1 of Evil Up Close was released. It featured this case. Please add any comments down below. 
and thank you for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. I mentioned the area Southall earlier. For those of you who kind of recognise that name, this was the main location for the filming of Bend It Like Beckham. Goodbye.